Good morning. If you will be turning in your Bibles to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. That is where we will spend our lesson uh, here this morning. It's good to be with you all this morning. As was mentioned, we have a very good number uh, here this morning. How blessed we are to be able to gather together on the first day of the week and worship with our brethren. It is good to see each and every one of you. And it's also good to be with those that I, I can't see that might uh, be in the back as well. I think I've been forgetting them every week, but I don't want to forget them because <laughs> we're glad for all in attendance this morning. In James chapter 1, uh, we discussed how if we are patient through trials and if we remain faithful through trials, we're going to develop steadfastness and we're also going to develop spiritual maturity. And part of spiritual maturity that was discussed back in James chapter 1 was the importance of being good listeners and being slow to react when we hear something. You remember back in James chapter 1, the, the reader was warned to put away unrighteousness and receive God's Word. The reader was told to be a doer of the Word and be willing to make corrections where necessary. As we get into James chapter 1 and verse 26, there the reader was told that we also need to reflect on how we control our tongues. The point is made that we can think that we are religious, we can think that we are faithful people, but sometimes our tongues say otherwise. Over in Matthew chapter 15 and verse 11, it says, It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth that this defiles a person. I believe the importance of controlling the tongue is something that cannot be overstated. And it's something that while James mentions there at the beginning of his epistle in James chapter 1, as we get here into James chapter 3, he goes into a lot more detail on the subject of controlling our tongue. So as we cover this morning the beginning of James chapter 3, I pray that this lesson will be helpful to you. I hope it will be a good reminder of some things that we need to be aware of. And I also pray that as we consider these things, that you'll reflect on them. Examine yourselves this morning and see what changes that you need to make in your own life. And as we get into the first couple of verses in, here in this text, I want to read this real quick. He gives a warning here. He says, Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways, and if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle his, his whole body. Now notice here at the beginning of our text, the warning that is given is not to control the tongue, but rather the warning is, not many of you should become teachers. The reader is given instructions to give strong consideration before seeking and taking the role of a teacher. If you think about it, it's kind of a, a strange warning. We're not used to seeing something like that. It's very common for us to want to encourage everyone to develop those skills that are necessary to teach. But why does James give this warning here that not many should become teachers? He goes on at the end of verse 1. He explains that a teacher ought to be especially careful because those who teach are going to be judged with greater strictness, he says. You know, as a teacher, this passage has always been quite humbling uh, to me personally. You know, why would a teacher be held any more accountable than someone else who does not teach? Well, when you consider the influence that a teacher has over their students, there is a great uh, responsibility. You know, not only does that teacher, do they impact themselves and what they teach, but they also have the ability to influence others uh, towards a particular path. You know, if a teacher, if they are careless in their words, what can happen is it can discourage those that are hearing those words. Those students, they could be led away, for example, from the truth of the gospel and how terrible of a thing that would be. Now, I don't want this warning to let, you know, let that keep you from teaching because we're going to also see here in this passage that the tongue can have a very positive impact as well. But I believe the point being made here in this passage is that teachers, and especially those that are in great positions of authority, those that have great influence, they need to be especially mindful of their influence and the impact that they can have from the things that they say with their mouths. 
In verse 2, you know, we've been talking about the warning to teachers. In, in verse 2, James here, he gives a warning that I believe though, even if you're not a teacher, this is applicable to all Christians. So listen very closely. You know, we realize that all of us, we have our faults and we may all struggle with different things. However, controlling the tongue is something that a great deal of many people struggle with. And I'm going to include myself in that this morning. You know, it is acknowledged as being so difficult that the one that is able to do that is described as a perfect man. And I believe when he says that here in James chapter 3, I believe he's calling back to the phrase that we saw back in James chapter 1 and verse 4 where he says, And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And I believe when we studied back in James chapter 1 in that lesson, the reference here we said to being perfect is not in the sense of being sinless as we sometimes might use it, but rather one that is spiritually mature. Brethren, if we are if we are seeking, if we are trying to be spiritually mature, learning to control our tongues is something that James says is absolutely vital to that growth. And as we progress, I want us to see real quickly some illustrations that James is making here in this text that describe for us the dangers of the tongue, the things that we need to be aware of. So picking up our reading, if you're reading along with me, starting in verse 3, he says, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. In verses 3 and 4, uh, James here, he, he draws a couple of illustrations to demonstrate how something that is very small and seemingly insignificant, it can impact a very large circle of things. It can impact the big picture, if you will. For example, he mentions horses. They are large. They are very powerful animals. And yet, if you put that small bit into their mouth, you can guide them in whatever direction you desire. He also makes the point that you have a rudder on a ship and the rudder in comparison with the rest of the ship is a very small part of that ship. And yet, that is the piece that functions for the pilot to be able to steer that, that boat in whatever direction he wants. You know, the tongue in comparison to the body is just a very small part of God's creation of the body. And yet, even though it is small and yet even though it might seem insignificant, it has the ability to impact our entire bodies. Going forward to verses 5 and 6. In verses 5 and 6, James demonstrates that something that is so small and again, seemingly insignificant, it can also cause great destruction he illustrates how a forest fire it is so destructive and it is so hard to contain sometimes you see that on the news how hard those things are to control and it can grow to be very large but generally it doesn't start as something large it generally starts as something very small i can't read this passage without remembering uh, an event that happened in our lives and, and i'm sure you all saw it on the news back in november 2016 karen and i were on a trip uh, we were actually traveling. Karen was pregnant with Randy at the time, so it was kind of our getaway uh, before we had Randy. And I remember we were driving into the, the town of Gatlinburg. And we arrived, and it was eerie. Nobody was out. The entire town was covered in smoke. And you may remember what I'm talking about, the, talking about the, the fires that impacted that area. The Gatlinburg fire, it was so catastrophic. There was a nearly 2,500 structures that were damaged. 17,000 acres were burned. $500 million estimated in damages from that fire. Also, 14 people were killed in that fire. It was a terrible, terrible event. The thing is, is though, is that fire it was not big at first. Uh, according to the news and the news articles that I read, allegedly it was started by some teenagers that were dropping lit matches on the ground. Very, very small. And yet, what seemed to be very harmless was catastrophic to that area. 
Now I want you to keep in mind that when James is writing James chapter 3 here, he's writing it in the context of the first century. And the reason that's significant for us is because this was before television, this was before the radio, it was certainly before the invention of social media. I want you to think about, even though this was very true back in James' day in James chapter 3, I want you to think about how this illustration is even more so a reality for us today. I'm asking a couple of questions to make you think about our own lives this, this morning. How many have had their lives drastically impact and changed because of a single post that they put on social media? How many people have become ended up in very serious trouble because of a secret that they told one person who then told another and that person told another and it, and it just goes on down the line? Brethren, it is so important for us to have an awareness of the destructive power of our words. You know, I've been guilty in the past of not always being wise with my words, and I've learned some tough lessons in the past. And this is a skill that I'm going to continue to have to strive to be perfect at. But I hopefully this morning, as we think about these things, understanding the dangers of the tongue, I hope you understand what's at stake and why this is so important. James goes on in the rest of this passage, uh, verses 7 through 12. He goes on to illustrate the challenge uh, of training the tongue. Nobody is saying this is easy. He starts out saying in verse 7, he says, For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Verse 11, Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. You know, going back to the verses 7 and 8 there, you know, I'm not much of a, an animal person. And yet one thing that I enjoy doing, especially like if I'm on vacation, is I enjoy being able to go to the zoo and be able to see animals that I, I just don't commonly see, again, from afar and behind a cage. Um, you know, it's interesting to me, and yet it's also part of God's design that we have been able to manage, uh, learn to manage, and learn to subdue animals of all different kinds. And in many cases, we're able to, to train them to do things like tricks and, and do little performances for people like at the zoo. The thing is, is that mankind's intellect, it far surpasses that of animals. And yet, even with that ability, man still struggles to figure out how to tame the tongue. I believe James here, he, he seems to make a comparison of our tongues and, and man's ability to tame animals and animals who are often aggressive, they are restless. Sometimes they are poisonous with their bites or their stings. To make the point that our tongues are very, very dangerous. They are tough to subdue. And like animals, they are restless. Sometimes they are full of poison. James goes on to make the point that it is so difficult to tame the tongue because in one moment, we can be doing something good with our speech and in the very next moment, we can do something that we ought not to do. You know, we can be praying to God, we can be praising Him in one second as we're doing here this morning, and in the very next second, we could say something bad about our brother. And he makes the point, who is made in the image of God. We could be saying something about someone that God loves. I want to ask us a question this morning. And I'm going to stomp on my own toes, my own toes here this morning. Have we ever been guilty of coming to the assembly as we have done here this morning? We, we sing as we have done. We, we pray as we have just done a moment ago. And then right after that last amen at the end of services, we involve ourselves in something like gossip. You know, and I can't say that I haven't been guilty of something like that myself. James says here in this passage, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. But yet he also goes on to say that even though that's the case, these things ought not to be so. He makes the point that a spring of water does not produce fresh water in one moment and salt water in the next. Trees only bear fruit according to their kind. Figs, uh, fig trees don't bear grapes or olives, neither do grapevines produce figs. 
Christians, we ought to walk in the Spirit and we ought to use our bodies, especially our tongues, to produce the fruit of the Spirit as is described in Galatians chapter 5. Our speech should be that which is loving, is joyful, is peaceful, is patient, is kind, is good, is faithful, and gentle, and demonstrates self-control. Brethren, if we are walking in the Spirit, our speech should not produce things that are sexually immoral, impure, or anything else that is associated with the works of the flesh. Brethren, let us not be guilty of being one that speaks in such a way that builds up in one moment and then turns around and tears down in the very next moment. And I understand that based on what we just read here in this passage, that this is not something that is easy to do. And I'm not trying to, to say that it is. It is difficult. James makes that point. But yet we are still urged to work on this and attain this ability. We've got to. Now before we close this morning, I, I want to share some thoughts about how we can apply this admonition and the lesson will be yours. You know, I think one point to review uh, and I'm sorry if you can't read that this morning. That is rather small. But I think one point to review is something that I mentioned back in the introduction to our lesson. We already talked about how in James 1 we were told to be quick to hear and slow to speak. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 20 says, Do you see a man who is hasty in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Brethren, it is wise to be patient and thoughtful before we speak. You know, it is often when we are hasty in our speech that we end up saying the wrong things and end up being a discouragement to others. Let us listen and let us think before we speak. You know, as I just alluded to a second ago, gossip. I, me personally, I believe this is one of the biggest issues in the church and we don't talk about it as much as we ought to. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 19 says, Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets Therefore, do not associate with a simple babbler. You know, I think sometimes, you know, somehow gossip has become a sin that is just so prevalent, it's just so common, it seems so innocent that we just aren't as concerned about it as we ought to be. Gossip is something that we need to guard against. It is destructive and it is evil and it is contrary to God's will. And I think hand in hand with, with gossip and avoiding gossip is also to make sure that we are truthful. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are His delight. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 1 says, Better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in speech and is a fool. I think it goes without saying that we ought to be a truthful people. We ought to be truthful in the things that we say. Our God is truthful in all things. And we should seek to be like Him in this regard. Just kind of as a side note here, something I was thinking about in our current situation that we find ourselves in. You know, I think we need to be particularly mindful of this point. Again, going back to the idea of being careful on social media. You know, we even talked about this a couple of weeks ago in our lesson about some good news. We talked about the fact that there is often fake news that is either twisted or it's downright false. But here's the thing. That fake news, we, we aligned it with our, our media networks, our, our news networks, but it always it isn't always limited to what our major news networks talk about. A lot of fake news and a lot of false information, it is spread very quickly on social media. And brethren, it is not just by non-Christians. It is by Christians who may be well-meaning, but just didn't think about it before they shared it. We need to, when we see something, and when we're thinking about sharing something, we need to think about it very quickly. We need to check that out. In many cases, we might unintentionally spread false information because we didn't stop to think before a second about what was being said and what we're sharing. And with this current crisis that we've got going on with the current controversy with these protests and these riots and, and the issues that are going on between you know, the races in our country, there is a lot of contradictory information that is being spread. Let us be more careful about the things that we share, whether on social media or even just among ourselves. We also need to be very careful to avoid speaking in such a way that is unwholesome, or as the English standard says, it is corrupting. Paul says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up 
as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. He says that over in Ephesians chapter 4. The question we need to ask ourselves this morning and we need to continue to ask ourselves is, is our speech appropriate for a Christian? Or do we discourage others by our speech? Finally, and I'm looking at myself here, we need to be mindful of the things that we teach others. You know, you remember the original admonition there at the beginning of James chapter 3, it was an admonition that not many should become teachers. And perhaps the worst thing that we can do is to lead others astray by teaching something falsely. And this is why I told you that this passage is extremely personal for me. I need to be careful to make sure that when I teach something, it is rooted in God's Word and that it will lead people down the path of righteousness and in the will of God. We need to be those that are rightly handling the Word of truth as Paul talks about in 2 Timothy chapter 2. As we close this morning, I just want to close with a couple of thoughts. You know, there are so many ways that we can use our speech. We can use our speech to tear down, to discourage, and to curse. Or what James would have us to do is we can use our speech to praise God and to encourage others to be faithful to God. If you are one here this morning that teaches or perhaps you have a desire to teach, this passage is a very strong warning to you. Be mindful of the influence that you have. But make sure that you are working to control your tongue. Because if you cannot, it would be better to let those who can teach in your place. Let us be mindful of the dangers of the tongue. Be mindful that our tongues, though they are very small, seemingly insignificant, they can control our entire bodies and they can cause a lot of damage. We understand that taming the tongue it is a challenging thing. But be mindful of that and strive your hardest. Determine that you're going to strive your hardest to be one that is self-controlled and mature in your speech. I would urge you this morning, please consider these things. Examine yourselves and repent and make corrections where necessary. Now real quickly, before we close, I want to offer the invitation. And while this lesson has not been one that would teach you what you need to do to be saved, you know, so far in the book of James, we have been taught many principles that are important for growing Christians to be aware of. And if you're a Christian this morning and you're seeking to grow to be spiritually mature, James has given us some strong words to consider this morning. We need to be especially careful to make sure that we exercise control over the things that we say. But this morning, if you're here and you're not a Christian, you still need to take that first step. I would ask you this morning, do you believe in God? But you still have not obeyed the Gospel. If so, I would encourage you this morning to humble yourself, submit to God's will, repent of your sins, confess your faith, and submit to His will by being baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Resolve to live your life according to the will of God and desire to grow to be spiritually mature. This morning, if you are subject to the Lord's invitation, come forward as we stand and as we sing.